Good evening. The all-important winter session of Parliament starts on Thursday and is seen as being extremely crucial for the Congress-led UPA government. The ruling coalition has been attempting to fast-track reforms while struggling to keep its alliance intact ahead of the 2014 general elections. But even as the government is planning to introduce some major reform bills in this session, the opposition is all set to take on the Congress party on a host of issues and bills. There are three major anti-graft, anti-corruption bills slated, or the government wants to choose these in this session of parliament. These include a judicial accountability bill, bill already passed by the Lok Sabha and scheduled to be introduced in the upper house. This bill is meant to create a mechanism to deal with complaints against High Court and Supreme Court judges. There is the Whistleblowers Protection Bill, which aims to protect those who blow the whistle on corruption or misuse of power. And of course, the big one, the Lokpal Bill, the political hot potato that captured a country's imagination and the media's imagination. The Lokpal Bill launched a movement, a so-called People's Movement, and almost two years of political tug-of-war has resulted in this. The government has decided to drop the contentious clause relating to setting up Lokayuktas in states from the Lokpal Bill and try and get it passed in the winter session of Parliament. Uh, starting later this month, media reports now and also some people say political logic suggests that dropping the clause would help the government secure the support of the UPA allies such as the Samajwadi Party and the Bahujan Samaj Party and even some NDA parties in the Rajya Sabha where the ruling coalition is in a minority. Ladies and gentlemen, tonight on The Big Picture, we will discuss the upcoming session of Parliament, the need for some serious legislations to be passed, and of course, what to expect when diverging voices on the three main anti-corruption bills take each other head-on. On the panel tonight, joining me in the studio right now, is Mr. Satyavrat Chaturvedi from the Congress. Uh, we'll start the program uh, with my guest in the studio. More guests will follow as they join us. We'll introduce them. Thank you so much, sir, for joining us. First of all... Uh, there are three main uh, bills that people are talking about, the media is talking about right now. What is the government strategy going to be in this particular session of parliament? The Prime Minister has already called uh, leaders of opposition, has had a meeting with them. He, of course, wants a constructive uh, session of parliament, unlike the previous one. Do you expect it to be at least slightly more constructive than the last one? <coughs> well, I hope that this parliament session really yields in the uh, business. And, and really uh, comes out to be an effective uh, uh, legislation uh, uh, considering uh, session of the parliament. Fact of the matter is that you mentioned just three bills. There are many more bills, many more which bills. are very important bills. Yeah. And in fact, some of these bills have been waiting to be considered and passed in parliament for the last uh, two sessions. Mm -hmm. And uh, for one reason or the other, which we all know, disruptions, dis continuous disruptions mm. that, uh, that prevented them from getting passed. <clears throat> now, I hope that uh, with, with, the, uh, with the initiative that the Prime Minister has taken, the initiative that the uh, Speaker Lok Sabha is taking on 21st, uh, with all party leaders coming together, meeting and, and discussing the agenda, I think we should have uh, uh, a productive session, winter session, and uh, some of these very important legislation will go through. Mm. We will, of course, there will be some issues where we will have heated exchanges between various parties. Uh, there's political issues like uh, issues of corruption, the issues of um, and, uh, the rising prices, and uh, FDI is going to be one of the most contentious issues. But not denying the fact that all these issues have their own uh, importance right. and must be discussed on the floor of the House. What I have been emphasizing all throughout, and the government has been emphasizing all throughout, let us discuss, hmm. let us debate, let us reason out. I mean, this forum is meant for, for discussion, debate, and... Uh, and arguing things on merits. Absolutely. I want to take that point along. Uh, I've just been told, I've been joined by D. Raja from the CPI, of course, the opposition. Let's get an opposition view also yeah, uh, on this. Uh, we've also been joined uh, uh, along with D. Raja, joins us. Uh, Sanjeev Srivastav, he's also a senior journalist. He's also joined us right now. I'll go to D. Raja first. Uh, thank you, Mr. Raja, for joining us on The Big Picture. First of all, Mr. Satyavar Chaturvedi hopes and all of us hope that this session, of course, will be slightly better in terms of legislative business that can be conducted. I want to ask you this. 
this. There are so many bills on the anvil, Mr. Chaturvedi. You also mentioned that apart from the three anti-graft, anti-corruption bills, there are a host of other bills. I will come to that in a bit. But I want to get a sense from you. Uh, should we expect, should us, the common man, expect at least this time the opposition parties to engage in a meaningful, constructive debate or should we just expect more adjournments this time? Exactly. As far as uh, left parties are concerned, we have made it very clear umpteen times that parliament should work, parliament should function. All the issues related to the livelihood of common people, poor people, the tiling people must be taken up, debated, deliberated in the house. That is our position. And even today, Mr. Kamal Nath has convened the meeting of the whips and uh, leaders of all political parties from both the houses, Lok Sabha and Rajya Sabha. I was present in that meeting. I made it very clear. The left wants parliament to function. Having said that, I also want the uh, caution the minister, uh, the priorities must be such that uh, other parties in opposition should also agree with government. Now, I agree with Mr. Chaturvedi, there are a lot of bills uh, listed. In the meeting, uh, we were given a list of uh, bills which are going to be uh, placed. 25 bills have been listed for consideration and passing by the winter session of the parliament and 10 bills have been listed for introduction. Besides these bills, there is a special uh, discussion on the supplementary grant, of, uh, grant for demands and uh, unless parliament works meaningfully, you cannot have all these bills. Absolutely. Mr. And uh, I made it uh, a point uh, to Mr. Kamal Nath. Uh, this is unrealistic uh, in the situation, given situation as it is in the country, as well as it is reflected in the parliament. Right, as right. far as left parties are concerned, we have said there is no mention about right to food legislation. It is not there in the list. There is no mention about uh, land acquisition bill. It is not in the list. And as far as left is concerned, we have given notices on the issue right. of FDI in multi-brand retail trade. Mr. Raja, uh, absolutely right. Uh, I want to talk about some more bills that you just mentioned. Of course, uh, I'll come to that in just a bit. I want to get an independent perspective uh, after I got the government perspective and the opposition perspective. Sanjeev Srivastav joins us uh, as well. Thank you, Sanjeev, for coming on the big picture again. The Prime Minister has called the leaders of opposition to find a way out of the dead lock, uh, which essentially, uh, basically, if I want to use a very harsh term, wasted last uh, session, the monsoon session of parliament. Uh, then, back then, the opposition was really attacking, the, the BJP especially was attacking the government on the corruption issue. Now that the corruption, anti-corruption issue, anti-graft anti bills are going to be introduced, do you expect it to be any different uh, from uh, the monsoon session of parliament? See, it's a, it's a difficult one. Uh, the NDA meeting is right now going on in uh, Mr. Adwan, at Mr. Adwani's residence. Two or three strands are now emerging which are quite clear that Mamta Banerjee's uh, no confidence motion may actually not get much support from, from the NDA because uh, the opposition mood is that perhaps they don't have the numbers, they have sensed it and so they may not press with a no confidence motion. But having said that, would they go the other way and allow the government to carry out legislative business and in a in a manner of speaking, come out vindicated from this session? That's the question which NDA meeting will perhaps decide today and also in the coming days, that what is the kind of agenda they want to set? Because one point of view within the NDA or opposition ranks is that even if they don't press for a no-confidence motion, they shouldn't allow this government to conduct normal business because the political message goes out that the government is lame duck. The government on its, on its side is very keen that it does go ahead and pass those legislations because not just India, the world is going through very difficult times and a number of crucial economic decisions, policy decisions which need to be taken only on the floor of the parliament have been pending for some time now. So the government really wants to shake off that uh, policy or paralysis or deficit kind of governance deficit tag it has got in the last few months which is trying to right. do shake off in the last few weeks. Uh, particularly in the economic front. Right. So it's a battle of nerves between the opposition and the government. I just hope better sense prevails and politics for once, you know, parliament session, politics will take precedence, but somewhere policy and national interest should also be there on the plate 
for everybody, treasury benches and the opposition Absolutely, benches Sanjeev. to uh, consider. I think you hit the nail bang on the head. I'm com coming back to Mr. Chaturvedi now. Let's talk about uh, some other important bills that you mentioned uh, in your okay. opening remarks. There is, of course, there is pension. The, Sanjeev mentioned very important economic reform bills, pension reform, the insurance reforms. There are other social bills as well. The yeah. whistleblower bill is there as well. Uh, there is uh, the sexual uh, harassment against women protection bill there is there. I mean, I can't imagine any political party would want to stall that particular bill because it concerns women in our country and a, such an important issue. See, <clears throat> what is the paradox is when we discuss it in the studios, we talk very nice things. Every session, before every session, we have a discussion on studio, on channels. And the political parties would say and, and commit themselves to, to, to allowing the house to function and to cooperating with the, uh, with, the, with the legislative business. But then suddenly on one excuse, one pretext or the other, then something happens and everything goes haywire. Now, this has to be prevented. As you have heard uh, Mr. Raja saying that uh, the parliamentary affairs minister has been... Uh, talking to various political parties and their leaders. This exercise has been initiated on the part of the government. Uh, the speaker is going to speak to all political parties and discuss with them the agenda tomorrow. I hope that a better sense prevails. Now look, there has to be a very clear line drawn today. If national interests are preceded by, by, by narrow political interests, mm then we are going to have a difficult time. Mm. But if national interest, as we claim, are supreme to considerations of all political parties, then I think we should be able to transact business in a normal manner. And that is in, under these difficult circumstances, mm. no political party should at least make hindrances or create problems in the way of passage of those bills which are important for the economy of this country. National interest. Mr. Raja, you heard Mr. what Mr. Chaturvedi said. Can you promise him today that the left party <coughs> will support the Congress party uh, and the government on issues of national importance at least and make sure that bills like uh, a sexual harassment against women's protection bill is passed? Can you make that promise today? You are uh, singling out one bill, uh, women. And it's I'm an asking, example, sir. It's an no, example no, of national not example. Uh, you should pick up good example. I know what you are trying to do. And what about the women reservation bill? Yeah, it was passed by Rajya Sabha. And uh, it is uh, yet to be taken to Lok Sabha. Why you are not referring to that bill? This is not the way. I am talking about other bills. Banking, amendment bill, insurance uh, uh, bill. What are these bills? Right. These are all bills in tune with the neoliberal uh, paradigm of uh, uh, economic uh, uh, development in this country and uh, uh, government should draw some lessons from what happened in uh, US or uh, European Union countries by following the neoliberal economic policies, fiscal policies and government claims these are all big ticket reforms and the finance sector liberalization. For me, as left, I speak for the left. We think these are not in the national interest. If government brings some bills in the national interest, considering their national importance, definitely we will consider. Right. We are not such uh, blind people uh, opposing everything blindly. But whether these bills are in the national interest, right, that is sir. my fundamental question. And FDA in multi-brand retail trade, Congress party can claim it is in the national interest. But we think it is not in the national interest. Absolutely. That is where the uh, difference remains. Right, and sir. that is why our party, the left parties, are given notice under certain rules. Uh, rule 184 in Lok Sabha and 168 right, in sir. Rajya Sabha. Right, so sir. we should have open mind. And Congress party, the government also should have opened right, sir. Point taken, sir. discuss with the opposition. Point taken, sir. You made your point. Uh, and I agree that there should be a debate here. And, and I, as, as we gather that the CP, uh, CPI and the CPM will stick to a vote on FDI in retail. That's what their position no, no is. No problem about uh, discussing uh, the issue of FDI, mm -hmm. discussing any other issue. I mean, I categorically make a commitment here on behalf of my party and on behalf of the government that... We will not shy away from discussing any issue that, that the opposition wants to discuss. Absolutely. But 
of course that has to be within the format of rules of I the think parliament. that's a pretty big thing you've said well, on the program today that's a, that's a pretty big commitment from someone senior in the in the uh, congress and the government uh, we'll take a small break here gentlemen we'll come back and I want to discuss the other big news uh, that is uh, making the rounds the media uh, is hyping that is of course the no confidence motion about to be uh, brought in by a former ally of the congress party uh, the Trinamool congress but that's after the break uh, please stay with us keep watching the big picture Welcome back to the big picture. Let's talk about the other big news that the media can't get enough of. Former ally Trinamool Congress uh, will bring a no-confidence motion against the government, the, the Congress-led UPA government. The Congress and the UP on its part, they're pretty confident that that no-confidence motion will not fly. Sanjeev Srivastava, I want to ask you this. Uh, conventional wisdom suggests and also media reports during the round that uh, Mamta Banerjee, uh, that no-confidence motion that her party wants to get in, uh, they don't really have the numbers to bring the party down. What's your take on that? I think most people have come around in Delhi to accept that view that the, a no confidence motion per se will not be passed because the government has the numbers. So the second best uh, strategy which the opposition where they are trying to close in their ranks is to somehow like Mr. D. Raja was just saying to have a debate on uh, the uh, FDI and retail issue and have it under a rule wherein they can force a division. And in that division there will be a lot of allies also of the, of the UPA government like the like the Samajwadi Party, which have which have actually who have voiced their uh, opposition to the move in in no uncertain terms, that will leave them in a very piquant situation. Now, if they want to support the government, they can. But how do they vote for the government on that on that motion? So the 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 opinion is clearly divided. I think the no confidence motion is more or less junk. All opposition efforts and all those who are trying to embarrass the government and perhaps cause more than a bit of embarrassment, are trying to ensure a debate on, on the motion under Rule 184, which, which should perhaps ensure a division at the end. And that's what Mr. Chaturvedi was uh, saying earlier, if you would have caught his hint, that the government is not shying away from debate or discussions on any issue, but under which rules and uh, they will be, right. the debates will be held is something which, which, uh, which there is already a precedent. So right. I think the battle, battle lines are drawn under which rule the debate on and the discussion in the house will happen on the op, on the FBI and retail issue, and that's where that's where most observers would now be watching. And I think that the the ruling of the chair would be final on that. And uh, so that that will be the interesting bit, really. Right. We will look forward to that and how that plays out. Uh, Mr. D. Raja, quick question to you. Uh, uh, the CPM has already said that it will not support the no confidence motion as it might help the government. Now, uh, explain that stand to us, please. As far as uh, CPI right, and, your party. The left, yeah. and the left parties are concerned, yeah. already we have given notices under those rules on FDI. This is our position. We are only four in Lok Sabha, CPI, and the entire left is 24. We do not have the 50 number to propose a no-confidence motion. We are not doing it. If other party is doing it, that other party should have some strategy to mobilize at least 50 number to propose the motion. I do not know what is going to happen. But what we think, we should not undermine the capacity of the government to manipulate and to mobilize the number in case of vote. Because we witnessed the cash for vote uh, episode in parliament when the government had to face confidence vote or no confidence vote in the past. So what strategy we should adopt? We think the uh, issue must be taken up. FDI in multi-brand retail trade is a very vital issue on which we can force the government to rethink some of the rethink over some of the decisions, particularly FDI. And the government can change its position. If government doesn't change, then government will stand exposed. And uh, already the government has lost its moral 
political authority this but, government has to go so but how this government can go should go it all depends upon the strategy the parliament right. parties adopt right, and right. the left has adopted this strategy of focusing fdi in multi brand right. retail trade so that's going to be your main weapon agreed i want to get mr chaturvedi in again uh, sir how will the government look to tackle the task ahead it seems like an ominous task there are divergent voices the bjp is sharpening their knives the left doesn't seem to agree with you on much especially on fdi detail building consensus is something that the up has some would say fared badly at in the past what is the new strategy i think we'll have to talk to the political parties and their leaders uh, on certain issues we have differences with the left but then there are many other issues where left and we think alike similarly we have differences on some of the issues with with the with the political parties like bjp and on most issues but then there are some common issues where bjp and 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 congress policies uh, especially in the economic field pretty similar we were pretty similar yeah, yeah. i mean <clears throat> we'll have to work out a strategy whereby we can we can uh, uh, we can uh, work out numbers mm. uh, in a, in a manner that each issue by issue we we uh, take up the issues and and work out cooperation and seek cooperation from uh, friendly parties from from uh, from other political parties and and uh, i i think it, it's not going to be easy mm. uh, is going to be a difficult exercise but at the same time i'm i'm pretty hopeful that if uh, if if handled uh, tactfully and handled uh, um, efficiently i mean this this can really work out right uh, sanjeev shivastav i want to ask you this uh, as an independent uh, uh, view uh, how important basically is it for the government to really build consensus this time around because 32 bills minimum are slated to be passed none of them uh, did even uh, got a debate in parliament last time around i mean do you think the political parties will manage somehow this time around uh, and what are the main contentions of course fdi is what the left is going to harp harp on bjp is going to stick to corruption issues uh, and the rest so how will the government really find a way mr chaturvedi thinks that uh, there has to be some serious debate but if players within the arena are not willing to listen to each other how will parliament function see there are a couple of issues really one is the the political message which goes out if the parliament winter session is a wash out nobody really gains but also the fact of the matter is that the government also really does not lose much as far as political message is concerned because the previous parliament sessions have also been a wash out and in this particular case while the bjp will raise trying to raise its own coal gate and other corruption issues the congress can again target the bjp principal opposition party on nitin gadkari and karnataka and so so they kind of cancel each other out so political even the bjp realizes it doesn't gain much by not letting the parliament to function now there is the big issue of what mr chaturvedi was just saying that it will be a difficult task but they need to reach out to the opposition parties now like mr raja was saying that the definition of national interest can not only be worked out and defined by the government of the day because they are they don't have those kind of numbers so to ensure that there is a consensus after all it is the elder brother or the government or whoever the treasury benches uh, whoever is occupying the treasury benches they have to walk that extra mile or two to try and accommodate other people's views and build that consensus right and and that's the only way forward in this session because if this also gets washed out then um, then, then there's a budget session and it's it'll be a very very tricky road ahead Absolutely. but again i'd like to reiterate that if the session is a complete wash out the opposition doesn't gain much and the governing party doesn't rule lose much in politics but in terms of governance and number of important We legislation spending right. the task of governance becomes more difficult absolutely and getting absolutely. the economy back on the track becomes more difficult absolutely mr d raja we have very little time left but i want a brief comment from you uh, if you were talking to your other opposition members not your left parties but the others how important mr raja is really to concentrate on some serious legislative business in this session the three anti corruption bills seem to be the need of the hour what would you say very briefly sir you see it is a known fact the left is for a very strong effective lokpal now uh, mr chaturvedi is the chairman of uh, select committee which has gone into the entire lokpal bill which was uh, debated presented in the rajya sabha now the select committee will have to 
submit its report then cabinet will have to consider that report again they will have to come back to the house uh, after reworking the entire legislation mm. and uh, i do not know whether it is possible in the winter session at all as far as we are concerned still i under uh, emphasize we want parliament to function we want parliament to deliberate on all issues but to run the parliament is a primary responsibility of the government right so democracy does not mean government alone so i need i need means opposition also i need yeah. to get one last word in from mr chaturvedi you he mentioned you were in the select committee i'm not going to ask you about lokpal because i know you can't speak about it but what is the message that should be going on very briefly sir bef just before the parliament session is starting Ye yes yes message that should be going on? yesterday we have had as far as the select committee is concerned yes i am the chairman of the select committee and uh, yesterday we have had the last meeting in the select committee and we have drafted the report i must inform mr raja that we have not only drafted but adopted the report without any dissent so it is a consensus report that has been adopted yesterday and on 23rd of uh, uh, this november we will present the report to the we will table the report to the house in rajya sabha uh i think when it comes to consensus i agree with sanjeev sanjeev has been very right and appropriate in saying that it is going to be a difficult task but at the same time by creating hangama by create by not allowing the government to function the the, the bjp or any political party for that matter isn't going to be a gainer in the public perception the people are against wasting the time of public and money of the public mm. and not conducting the business which is the prime responsibility of the legislators right. on on that note sir i have to close end the program we are completely out of time but uh, i think uh, sanjeev srivastava hit the nail bang on the head when he said even if uh, god forbid this session is a washout the government doesn't really stand to lose that much uh, uh, in terms of political gains but yes governance issues will become more difficult thank you so much for all my guests i must thank sanjeev sivastav for joining me on the big picture also mr d raja as well as satyavrat chaturvedi thank you sir uh, for joining us on the big picture that's all the time we have uh, on this edition of the big picture till next time athar khan saying goodbye good night and thank you for watching